Christian education has always been a, a vital part of my life. I really believe strongly in it. I believe we, even today, live in a time when God has been removed from society, removed from the classroom and from our lives. And yet the scripture teaches that He is the source of all truth and all knowledge. And unless you cannot expose young people to truth without Jesus Christ at the center of it. And so Dayton Christian has been established with that goal in mind to train young people to become like Jesus and to learn more about Him, to form a foundation, a value system which they can live out their lives accomplishing that. Dayton Christian started back in 1963. To be really honest with you, I had no idea what Christian education was all about. And yet God, the Holy Spirit, motivated me and drove me to, to chair a committee to start this ministry. And uh, for that end, and to that effect, today I know I understand what it is. I'm committed to it until the day I die. Well, I remember an English teacher named Geraldine Ayers, an elegant New England lady who uh, demanded a lot of her students and got a lot out of her students. Nobody wanted to let her down. She was, she was sweet, but she didn't have a great sense of humor. But she really, she really loved and, and taught English well. And she's really the reason I started into English. Once I decided I wanted to be a, a, a teacher, I knew I wanted to be an English teacher because of Mrs. Ayers. And I came here as an English teacher. I was the most senior member of the English department after a few years. And uh, they, they brought us in to a, a meeting with the high school principal and the, high and the superintendent. And we were talking about replacing the English department chair. And he started describing, the principal started describing the kind of person they wanted for the English department chair. And I realized he wasn't talking about me. I didn't care about English that much. And that's when I realized, and I told him, listen, if we were talking about the Bible department, I'd be interested. Let me know in the Bible department, because I, I, you're just not talking about me. I don't care about English that much. So our hour and a half meeting was over in 15 minutes, and they had to go find somebody else as the English department chair. But that's when I realized I really wanted to teach Bible. Once I decided I was going to teach, I knew I wanted to teach at Dayton Christian. I'd been here four years as a student, freshman year through senior year, and I felt like people had poured so much into my life, I wanted to give back to that. Um, and I remember there was one school that called me for an interview, and I said, no thanks, I don't even want to come to the interview. I'm waiting to hear on my application for Dayton Christian. I didn't even go to the interview for the other school because I really wanted to teach here. And uh, I, uh, when I think about Mrs. Ayers, when I think about Mr. Schindler, when I think about people who invested in my life, I want to be that guy in the students' lives. I think it's wonderful to be involved with students at this stage in their life when they're sorting through stuff and I get to be alongside and ask them the probing questions and be there to help them work through things. I think it's a tremendous privilege and I love doing it. One teacher that had a huge impact on me, Dayton Christian, and I don't think he knows this, uh, but uh, Brent Davis is actually the current principal. Um, I had him for my freshman year of Bible, and um, I I remember like sometime in the second or third quarter, uh, Brent uh, really challenged us to uh, to just kind of logically think through whether it was possible to have uh, more than one absolute truth. And of all the things that really stuck out to me, but for some reason that, that conversation that lasted you know, a few days, maybe a week, uh, uh, really opened up a door for me to, to begin thinking about my faith rationally. Um, it wasn't until uh, between my junior and senior year that I then really sort of hit this point, almost of crisis, of knowing exactly what to believe, but really not knowing why to believe it, and fully aware that I was about to go into a world full of people um, that rejected Christianity. And I really couldn't say, um, other than because mom and dad told me to, and because the Christian tells me to, why I was a Christian. Um, and so it was then that my, my, my senior year uh, in Paul Pyle's Bible class uh, that I really began to approach Christianity um, not just as, as a, a spiritual, endeavor but also as an intellectual one as well and for me um, for me uh, that was a big turning point because I uh, began seeking an intellectual validation for my biblical Christian worldview and uh, at that point I could begin to approach these threatening questions without feeling threatened by them like why not Buddhism why not Islam um, absolute truth right and wrong you know how do I know that this isn't all just relative uh, 
that actually set me off on a journey. It, it affected my, in my college decision. It affected uh, what I ended up studying in college, uh, which wasn't what I initially set out to study when I went there. Um, it's affected my evangelism. It affected the first job that I took uh, moving out to the East Coast. And it even then affected uh, coming back here, which I didn't think I would do. Um, but, uh, but I found after, um, after a few years of teaching um, unbelievers, uh, that I was at a point where I really felt the sense of urgency to return to a place um, where I knew there were people graduating every year that still were craving that intellectual, rational validation uh, for why in the world they would follow a man that supposedly was God and died and rose again. Um, it's, an, it, it's almost criminal to allow us to let our students to graduate uh, believing that but not being able to really come to grips intellectually why that is. And uh, that's, that's one reason I'm here, uh, is, to, is to help students uh, achieve that synthesis of what Scripture says and what seems irrational, but which is in fact the most rational way to live one's life and to worship one's God.